in there to see where he is. I see that he's in a different country. And I also see a couple of his pictures had changed. My heart just sank, you know, because that means that he's been active. So what's going on? I'm not using Tinder anymore. I deleted the app, I deleted the account. He tells me and that we're a team and we're together and then I have nothing to worry about. There's no one else, there's only me. I care about you, I miss you, and everything will be alright, baby. As you say, Simon, son of a bitch. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. Salome here. Uh, today I have a very, very, very special edition. I watch everything, as you may know, from author films, art house films to very, very commercial films. But my heart lies with author films and that's why I created this channel so that I could talk about uh, the films that not many people watch. But this edition is a different one because as much as I, I love art house films, sometimes I need a break. I watch and look at art house films like really healthy food, okay? But the fact I'm enjoying healthy food doesn't mean that I don't like fast food. And for fast food films, I watch a lot of um, commercial films and also, I do like documentary films. And recently, Netflix, HBO and Hulu have been stepping up their game. And especially, I'm into true crime documentaries, starting from serial killers to petty crimes and scammers. And although, do I have a spicy video for you today? So I decided that in the month of May, every Friday, which will be four Fridays, I will upload um, a chatty video on my thoughts about um, crime documentaries based on con artists. The first film that I will talk about, and of course I would love to hear your opinions down below, is the Tinder Swindler. Oh my god. Is there anyone who haven't watched Tinder Swindler? Because I feel that this documentary can relate to everyone. Uh, so it's a relatively um, new uh, film and it covers the story uh, of um, a young man, uh, Simon Liviev, which of course is not his true name. He has actually done a lot more crimes but this particular documentary that was released by netflix named tinder swindler uh, is um, a film um, that is not a very long film particularly it's only an hour and a half but it covers uh, the stories of three women uh, who were deceived and lied by this guy so guys, uh, let's start from the beginning. Our protagonist, Mr. Simon, was born uh, Simon Hayut, or Hayat, I don't know how to pronounce it, in Israel, near uh, Tel Aviv. And actually, um, even in his 20s, he already had uh, committed um, petty crimes, and he was uh, trying to escape Israel, so he left Israel in 2011, and he went to Finland. And in Finland, of course, uh, he would continue crimes because that's what happens to these guys. If you don't step and hold accountable the criminal, they will just keep doing it all over again. And in Finland, actually, he managed to uh, scam and defraud three women and he was caught uh, in uh, 2015 and he served two years. In 2017, he was released. 
So the story that Netflix documentary covers started in 2017 and in the la it lasted till uh, 2019. So we are covering this uh, portion of his life and his crimes, but of course there are a lot of crimes uh, beyond this. And the fact that this documentary follows only three women doesn't mean that he scammed only these women. He scammed and defrauded much more. And uh, also he managed to steal up to 10 million dollars from these women. Can you imagine? So after uh, his return in Europe in 2017, a lovely single girl from Norway uh, matches with him and she thinks what a wonderful guy, right? He has everything. He's got this oh, southern smile, a warm personality, as it seems. And all his uh, profile, actually, for me post particularly and personally, is very suspicious because I immediately have questions when I see photographs of an online app with big cars, you know, like Ferraris or um, this guy driving jet skis and flying uh, private jets. This already makes me a bit suspicious, you know, because this is online dating, right? Why do you need to create this grandiose personality of you? unless you are hiding something, right? Like, who needs to see this much luxury on a dating app? That's the red flag for me, number one red flag. So, um, actually, all the women uh, who are interviewed in this documentary seem very lovely at first, but when you dig uh, a bit inside, it proves how much they projected on this guy, right? So they were already searching this type of guy and unfortunately they got this guy, but what they got was a huge scam. I'm not saying that, you know, super generous and rich guys don't exist, but it is very suspicious when on your first date a guy asks you to go with him to another country, right? It's a very, very big red flag for me personally. So, um, the first um, girl uh, who we hear in this documentary is uh, Cecilia. She's uh, pretty, she's independent. Uh, she's, you know, living her best life, we can say, because she has a job, uh, she can provide herself. And the only thing that she wants is truly a romance, right? And I love the fact that she did not, um, how to say, lie. And she did not say uh, that she wasn't looking for this Prince Charming. The very first words that she says a start that she was influenced by Disney um, characters, especially Beauty and the Beast. So she was, how can I correctly say, she was predisposed to assert this man of the dreams. So she matches this guy who seems lovely and get this, get this, he asks her to go and have a cup of coffee with her in the fanciest restaurant in the city, okay? So they meet in London, actually, because that's where um, Cecilia uh, was living at that time. And after the first date, you know, according to Cecilia, they clicked because, of course, Simon is a con artist. He's an emotional vampire. Of course, he will give women what they want. He's trained to lie. He's a pathological liar. 
and of course when you are um you know uh, empowered uh woman and independent woman you think that uh other people are like that and you know there is no uh, there was um no reason for cecilia to not to trust him according to her but according to me the guy already showed the red flags because as i am saying there is no need to show off your luxury that you can spend this much that you know you can live in this uh, lavish hotel on the first date okay so that's why i recommend all the women out there who are dating you know go to the parks or keep it low on the first date that's a general rule which will keep you more or less safe right so uh they um have coffee at this restaurant and then another really big red flag simon asks cecilia to go and fly with him in a private jet to bulgaria so let's just think about it you are having a first date with a guy and this guy asks you to go with him to another country and you are not suspicious I mean i don't know what to say i don't know what to say and not only she is not suspicious she's delighted and she genuinely thinks that you know here is the guy i deserved all my life here is my golden ticket of course let's go and let's have fun and let's have the love of um our life and you know the romance that i waited for so uh, no judging but this whole situation would be very suspicious to me personally and i don't know how this very talented woman who is so open-minded well it seems that she's open-minded doesn't ask the same question so the trust that cecilia had with simon would cost her two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so a lot of money right not to say anything about the emotional embarrassment that this all situation would cause her cecilia and simon have a wonderful time and then simon has to leave for his business because you know he's connected to king tycoon diamond family and he has to run a business he's all busy busy you know money flows i have nothing to worry and he leaves cecilia because he has to travel but uh he persuades her to find a flat in london so that they can live together the con man asks her to live together and of course cecilia is like delighted and she wants to live with him because she generally thinks that this is the guy this is the guy of her life but little does she know that simultaneously simon asks her to leave and move in together she he is already planning to scam another woman and that is where we go to another the second victim who is also a very accomplished lady an independent woman she says herself that she you know is a self-made um woman and she does everything herself she meets uh, simon online of course and uh in the end they become true friends um according uh to her and they meet several times you know um uh, sometimes they meet in one city sometimes in another and they form this close relationship according to prunella and they start to trust each other when prunella starts to trust simon because he is all 
sending the right vibes, allegedly. So, by this time, Simon starts to show his true self, meaning that he's texting the previous girl, the Norwegian girl, Cecilia, that he's in trouble, that um, his um, business partners are trying to hunt him down and arrest him, and he's in the big scandal because he has a lot of money. So he is in a life-threatening situation. And he manages to persuade Cecilia to send him money because allegedly he can't use his own card because they will track him down. So Cecilia sent the money to his boyfriend, Simon. And you know, she's worried that he's in trouble. She's also finding a flat so that they can move in together. And during this whole time, Simon is sending her loving messages that, you know, you are the best, you are the woman of my life and you're doing everything for us. I'm so grateful. <sighs> I mean, what an asshole, right? Who does it? Like he has literally no soul whatsoever, no empathy, no feelings. This case just boils my blood. It just really does. It just only proves that everyone can be scammed. Everyone can be scammed and there are a lot of pathological liars who will tell you exactly what you want uh, and basically Tinder swindle you, right? So, um, after getting money from Cecilia, the whole scheme of our con guy Simon was that he would scam one woman and use this money on another victim then he would eventually scam this other victim and put the money towards another victim so he was just shuffling these ladies like you know you go into casino and you shuffle some um, coupons and he was basically treating this woman as the banks you know you go to one bank steal the money then you go to another bank steal the money and he was just rolling around and he wasn't traveling for for business trips he just literally could not live in one country because eventually he would be caught so he always needed to move around so he was always escaping escaping uh until the end so he used Cecilia's money on Prinella and then he used Prinella's money uh, to uh, seduce other women. So during this whole time, everything that we are talking about is happening simultaneously. So by the time he's asking uh, Cecilia to move in with her, he's already doing this scam Thing with Prinella and the same time at the same time he already has a girlfriend in Amsterdam Eileen and I have to say that Eileen is my favorite character uh, she is Dutch and she really paid him back girl uh, these three women actually were trying to hold accountable uh, this Simon guy so she they reached um, the most famous uh, magazines uh, in their uh, countries and started to whistleblow and they were uh, not only whistleblowers but they are um, the faces of many more women who this guy scammed because he that's what he does he's a professional con artist so after uh, his profile became viral and everyone, if you googled, because, you know, the first thing you're doing when you match with a person and you like him is you google him, right? So when they googled um, Simon Leviev, of course, this Tinder swindler scandal would uh, come up. So 
mm, no one would date him in uh, 2019 because the scandal was going on uh, and after all this uh, he of course started using fake IDs and that's when and that's how he was caught this uh, whistleblower women they contacted police and actually this Dutch girl she managed to find out uh, what name uh, Simon was using and um, he she tipped the police that you know he's uh, trying to use a fake ID so beware and they arrested him in Greece so they arrested him in Greece sent him back to Israel and get this get this are you ready he was never charged for stealing these women yes 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 he was never charged for scamming women getting up to 10 million dollars from innocent women all around the world when he came back to Israel he was arrested and he spent five five months in prison not for these crimes that I spoke about but for the crimes he did back in 2011 do you remember the initial crime the initial crimes that made him flee Israel in the first place yeah you know sometimes I don't know how I feel about this world like how do you not punish this guy and then after this how are you even surprised surprised that he will continue scamming because that's what he does right and of course in um, 2019 when he was released he started this online business consultation uh, company the website and he basically went back to living his life as he was and there was no indication that he has financial problems he even after all these scandals he even has a girlfriend and then you see what you want to see right um, so these women were very rational in their life but they were really romance deprived I would say and I can definitely relate relate to that because you know when your career goes really well and when you are living in London uh, Oslo um, Amsterdam um, this uh, women already had everything they wanted and Simon created the face and the profile of the guy that was missing from their life so he was like a missing um, this missing uh, thing in their life and he knew that that's why he targeted these ladies and that's why he behaved this way because obviously he is a professional con artist and he knows how to be um, emotional uh, how to tell all the right things how to care for people and when you are emotionally toxic it is very very difficult for a woman to be defensive right mm. because uh, this warmth and smiles and emotional approach is uh, very very um, how to say uh, a big weapon when you uh, are a con artist and of course he used it another thing is that um, when you are empathetic and these women were empathetic and they really wanted to help him uh, when you are this type of a friendly person uh, you expect that other person on the other hand Simon um, you expect that he would have the same capacity to empathize with person and for me clearly he's a sociopath because he has no remorse no empathy to this day actually the Netflix documentary cre creators reached out um, to him and he said that he would sue the documentary creators because they are lying and even now he doesn't think that he did anything wrong so 
showing no remorse, no empathy. He doesn't care about anyone and anything. And all he wants uh, to feel is this sensation of owning things, uh, showing the how grandiose he is. And actually all this shows how empty his life is and how shallow it is. And I love that in the end, they in the end of the documentary, they showed how he shows um, this is the shoes I got, this is the car I bought. So you can really see that he identifies himself and his personality with things, not people. And this is a very clear indicator of what his priority is. His priority is money, wealth and things and manipulation. And uh, he uses these things, the fame, the money and the luxury as a tool to seduce, manipulate and um, hold power over people. Which leads me to my last point. Of course, uh, in the beginning of the video, I said that uh, these are millennials, basically. So people who, like me, were grown up uh, in a very um, online community. And um, this online community is full of showing wealth and showing what you own. Uh, and um, the online uh, platform always sells you the happiness dream, right? It always uh, shows you the things like the Birkin bag, Chanel perfume, uh, Balenciaga um, shoes. And they show it in the way that the things would make you happy, right? And this endless promise of happiness creates people like Tyndall Swindler and not only people like Simon but his victims as well because we are we all driven to have certain things whether it's a loving partner or a flying jet right so this is a very dangerous um, era in social media that we live in so we have to be twice more attentive very thoughtful and we should really ask questions what is our priority because if you don't start questioning what is bringing you real happiness and what not you will just become another simon and another consumer i don't think that everyone um everyone can become and anyone can become Simon because he's clearly a very disturbed person uh, so I do believe that he has some kind of disorder um, but uh, I just wanted to say that uh, the society and the social media and the internet this era that we are living in uh, can become very toxic uh, for human beings which are not used to acquiring so many so much information favorite psychologist esther perel says uh picking a partner is like going in a human supermarket so we should really think about uh the fact that not everything is a shopping mall and you should really be aware of who you met, who you date, and what is your priority. Uh, I think that these women are projected on Simon. Simon is a criminal and these people are his victims, but I think all these women had a chance not to be victims because no matter how deprived of romance you are, no matter how lonely you feel, you need to have common sense and you need to get your things together like this Aline Dutch girl did in the end. So good for her. She showed herself and she proved that she could beat him, you know, emotionally. And it just felt good when I was watching that she scammed him back because that's what, what he deserves. So yes, unfortunately, Simon is not the only one. He's actually the most amusing one out of all the cases. Next Friday, I will 
talk about another case. In this, uh, in that case, uh, I will talk about the female con artist. So not only guys are bad, but women can be quite scammy as well. So um, yeah, watch Tinder Swindler. Uh, you will have fun. You will be annoyed, and you will for sure doubt and filter guys more on Tinder.